What's up everybody, my name is Danon and welcome to Honestly. Today we're checking out the 2020 Razorblade 15 with the RTX 2080 Super Max Q version. And along the way, I'm gonna be comparing it with my personal Razorblade 15. This is the 2019 with the i7-8750H. And even though this is a 2080 version comparison, you can probably extrapolate the conclusions I make here for the 2070 models as well. And if you guys like what you see in this video, please give this video a thumbs up as that helps to shoot this video out. And please subscribe as I'm trying really hard to grow this channel and I would love your guys' support. Let's get honest. In 2019, Razer released two different iterations of the blade. They released the eighth generation i7-8750H model and then shortly thereafter the i7-9750H model. They also gave the option to have a higher refresh rate panel of 240Hz versus 144Hz. Other than that, everything basically stayed the same. Then in comes the 2020 model, and now the CPU is a 10th gen i7 10875H, which is an eight core 16 thread processor, which is a pretty big improvement over the six core 12 thread processor you got in the previous iterations. On top of that, they put in the RTX 2080 Super Max-Q version versus the standard RTX 2080 Max-Q in the previous iterations. And now the standard in the 2080 model, I don't know about the 2070, but in the 2080 model, you get a standard of the one terabyte NVMe SSD versus 512 gigabytes that were in the previous. Now, in case you're interested, Intel is still using the six core 12 thread processor, the 10th generation version of it, just in every blade that has a lower end GPU than the RTX 2070 Super. So in other words, if you have RTX 2070 Super or higher, you'll get that eight core 16 thread 10875H. And if you've got anything lower, you'll get the 10750H, which has six cores and 12 threads. This is the part in the video where I would give benchmarks, but I wanna give a little bit more background so you guys have the full picture. So first thing, when I went to go test and play some games on the 2020 model, I ran into a huge issue where it just wasn't performing the way it should and nothing worked. I installed new drivers, I, it, that didn't work. I updated everything. I went to Razer's site to get their drivers. They have no drivers there. I went to user community support. I messed with Synapse. I rebooted the thing a thousand times. I reloaded Windows, nothing worked. For some reason, the only thing that kicked it back into action was running a Unigen Heaven benchmark. I don't, I don't know why that made it work, but after that, everything seems to be working smoothly. But this is a cautionary tale to let you guys know, if you plan on picking this up, keep in mind, you won't find a lot of support out there because there doesn't seem to be a lot of people either facing that similar issue or picking this laptop up at all, especially with the current environment. Second thing to note is that Razer gives you different modes that you can set in Synapse, which does make a slight difference in performance. But here's the thing, in the 2019 version and then 2020 version, the synapses are different. So in the 2019, they give you the option to crank up the CPU or the GPU, not both, but you can manually adjust the fan speed in either balanced or GPU or CPU modes. In the 2020 model, you can crank both the CPU and the GPU, which is a great change and a welcome change, but you can't adjust the fan speeds if you do that. The fans go back into auto mode no matter what you do. You can only change the fan speeds in balanced mode. And this makes no sense to me. Why would you let users crank up the CPU and GPU but not adjust the fan speeds to accommodate for that additional power? I, I don't understand. I tried every different, you know, uh, configuration and trust me guys take my word for it the fans go back into auto mode if you try to crank up the CPU and GPU I, I don't know why so with all that being said I ran different benchmarks using different modes and they do make a slight difference and here's what they look like
In my review of the 2019 Razer, I mentioned how the fan noise on the Razer blades is really awesome. It's not quiet by any means, but it's not annoying. And what's incredible is that in the 2020 Razer, I think they actually made it even better. So here's a fan noise comparison at different speeds. In terms of temperature, the Razer Blade 2020 model has done a really good job at managing their temperatures. Now, that does, that's not to say it doesn't get hot because it will crank all the way up to 100 degrees on the CPU, but when I compare apples to apples playing Overwatch on my 2020 model versus my 2019, you can see that they've done a better job managing thermals. But it seems like to get there, Razer did compromise a little bit on performance because here's what the numbers look like if you compare the 2020 Razer Blade against other laptops with similar hardware. Razer has changed one of the most voice frustrations about the 2019 model, which is the bottom right hand side of the keyboard. So in the 2019 models, Razer went with a truncated shift and then they put the up arrow in between the right shift and the question mark. And for someone like me who uses that a lot, even after a year and a half, I still can't get the question mark right because of that weird placement. So in the 2020 model, now they've created a full length right shift. They put it right, th right next to the question mark where it should be, but to do that, they truncated the up and down arrows. And this is one of those changes that's a good and a bad thing, a blessing and a curse, because I didn't realize how much I used the up and down arrows and adjusting to that tiny up and down arrow has been quite a challenge. In terms of RGB, nothing has changed. It still looks as gorgeous as ever. I still think the best RGB implementation of any gaming laptop. And yeah, just check out the B-roll. It speaks for itself. Another change that they made was to the screen. Now you get a 300 hertz refresh rate panel versus 144 hertz. And just for some background, some context, I play a lot of quick titch games. So I did feel the difference going from 144 hertz to 300. Now, does it make me any better of a gamer? <laughs> no, I, I still suck. Uh, here's what the color accuracy looks like. In terms of screen brightness, this screen is brighter than my i7-8750H model, but it is the same brightness as the previous 9750H model. The brightness there is almost identical at just under 300 nits, which isn't particularly amazing. I think if you wanna be able to use your laptop comfortably outside, you're probably gonna want around 320 to 350 nits of brightness. The last major change is to the ports. The 2020 model has an almost ideal set of ports for creators. It has three USB 3.2 Type A's, one USB-C 3.2 Gen 2, a USB-C Thunderbolt 3, and an SD card reader that supports up to UHS-3. They've kept their HDMI 2.0B port, but they got rid of the mini display port. Unlike the 2019 blades, the 2020 blades can be charged using either USB-C port, but here's the catch. USB-C can only provide up to 100 watts of power. The included power brick provides 230 watts. So if you're trying to do full out gaming, you can't use USB-C, you're gonna need to use that custom power brick with that custom power slot that Razer includes. If you're doing something lighter like word processing, you should be okay with a 100 watt power supply. And that's good news because it means you can take around a more manageable size power brick. And it's even better news because battery life on this thing isn't great. With the thing turned down to 60 hertz, with the screen turned down to 60 hertz, with the screen down to 30%, I'm getting about four to five hours of battery life. So not super duper amazing. And here's another kind of crummy thing about this is that the 10th gen CPUs cannot be undervolted, maybe because of an exploit called Plundervolt, but because of that, you can't squeeze out any additional power. On my 2019 blade, I was able to undervolt that pretty aggressively, and I'm getting about five, anywhere between five and a half to seven hours of battery when doing it, when putting out about similar settings using light processing, a little bit of media browsing and things like that. Everything else is pretty much the same. The trackpad is big, it's responsive and smooth. The logo is just as annoying as ever. Good thing Dbrand makes skins that you can skin over it very easily. And the speakers are pretty much identical. Here is a quick sound comparison.
So my overall thoughts, I think the 2020 Blade is a great machine. I think they really listened to users' complaints and they even thought about how to overcome their own weaknesses. For example, they knew their battery life was gonna stink. So they gave USB-C charging options so you can carry around a smaller charger if you don't need to do intense gaming sessions, which is really, really, really cool. The only problem is, is that the GPU didn't seem to get a huge gain of boost. And even though their CPU did, well, Ryzen 7 is here for laptops and it just seems to be kicking Intel's butt all over the place. So because of that, it just makes the blade a little less attractive, especially in 2020 with Ryzen coming out and creating some amazing machines. So that's gonna wrap it up for this one, guys. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And again, please subscribe as I'm trying really hard to grow this channel and I would love, love, love for you guys' support and would love to grow this thing together. Until next time, everybody, stay safe. And as always, stay honest.